so excited. I just, I couldn't wait. I got it started already. Here, let me show you what I did and how to do this. First thing you want to do is set up your machine so that you have exactly the right size binding and you know that you can turn it around to the back and finish it like this. So, what size do you make this? Let me turn it over on the back side. We can see better. This one happens at when I cut this two and a quarter inches wide and then fold it. It happens to come out to halfway between. Um, let me get my tape measure here. Halfway between one fourth and three eighths. Now, I, I happen to know that that's 5 sixteenths, I think. Well, whatever. Halfway between 1 fourth and 3 eighths. So, my machine just happens to have a foot where that can ride right along that edge. And notice, by the way, that I've cut off the binding, or the backing, and the batting, so it's even with the front. And then I'm just going to lay this on here with all of the edges even and then stitch it. Okay, and take a look. I cut a little fake piece out, the sandwich, and I put this on there, and I'm going to try it. And I did. And when it's exactly the way I want it, that is the width that I'm going to stitch this right here. I happen to like mine very, very tight. So I make mine wide enough that I will actually have to force that over there and I get a nice tight binding. If you like yours a little bit more loose, then just make this part narrower, maybe all the way down to one fourth. It's really up to you how you want to do your binding. Okay, now I've got my machine all set. And I've done this one. I'm going to show you how I actually put this on. I start this whole process by sewing one edge at a time. And I'm going to start anywhere on this first edge right here. And I'm going to leave about 10 inches. You can leave a, it's about 10 inches. This is to make it easier to finish the whole thing later. Sewn down to here, because I'm using this width, I'm going to stop that width from the edge. And to make sure I do, that's where I pin it. And backstitch. Now the corners are very important. We want a nice 45 degree angle there. So we're going to lay it out, and you know you've got it when this is straight with this. This edge is straight with this edge. Now the secret here is put your thumb or your finger right there and fold it like this. If you've got it right, this cut edge right here should go right around there nice and neat without any big lumps. I'm going to pin it. Hold it in place. Okay. Turn the quilt around because I like my quilt laid out totally flat. So I know that this edge right here doesn't have any ruffles or anything that I can pull on. I want it nice and flat with the rest of the quilt. I've put my corner in here now and I'm going to line this up. And by the way, I want to point out that to me the binding is one of the most important things of a quilt. You can have the most gorgeous quilt and totally ruin it with a badly done binding. So here's where I like to put in extra effort. What I like about bias, first of all, is you can work with it. And it works with you. So I'm going to take this, and by the way, take a look at your seams before you start sewing and make sure that none of them are going to land on a corner 
This one just did, and while you were out for coffee, I took it apart and fixed it. Very annoying. So you want to try to make sure that it doesn't hit one before you ever even get to that point. I'm going to stretch this just a little bit, not a lot, okay? Just so that it's nice and snug. Then I'm going to pin it. Very important when you're working with bias to pin ahead of time. Because if not, your top feed is going to take this bias and push it ahead and you'll have those little folds and riffles. Okay, and the whole thing. <coughs> okay, I'm going to continue pinning and stretching it just a little bit. Again, not much. I've had people who put these things on and pin the entire quilt and then just sewed and sewed and sewed. I like to do one side at a time. Because you don't save any time by pinning the whole thing. And I tried it and I had a mess. I ended up taking out three sides anyway. Now notice this last pin is is going to get me to stop at the same width from here as what I'm sewing. Okay, now I'm ready to sew. Okay, I'm going to start sewing. I've done my little corner right here. I'll put that under there and down. Back stitch a little bit. Let's not sew over pins. I have my even feed I have my even feed foot in place. You may want to use a walking foot because you are sewing over a lot of thickness. Get your quilt so it doesn't fight with you. None of those little pleats that you keep sewing, seeing when you sew on bias. And that's because I've stretched it just a little bit and pinned it. collection of featherweights, but I never use them because you have to turn the wheel. And it's so annoying. And remember where I put that pin. I know now to stop there. And backstitch. And we're right back to doing the next side now. So if this were a big quilt at this point, I would go get a cup of coffee. And I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> 